Okay, before I start today's arm setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content. That just means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide. Plus, it helps out my channel, and I'm always appreciative of that. So, we're looking at manually scraping artwork today. So, this is ARM, and we can actually use this for several different front ends, including ones that I cover here on my channel, such as Retrobat, Recall Box, and many others. So, what we're going to do first of all is actually download it. I'm going to leave the link in my description for you to download this yourself. And I just want to shout out to the person who actually recommended to me to this program. Uh, so, what we're going to do then is download this. So, if we just go to download version with install, and we're going to go to details in download. And I'm using Google Chrome for this. Now, it says insecure download blocked for me. So you might consider using a different web browser to download this. If you should use this, then just go to keep and let this download. Once you've downloaded it, you'll download a zip folder like I've got just here. So if I just open this up and it's strats arm setup dot executable. I'm going to just drag that onto the desktop. It's just over 500 megabyte. It's not too big. Uh, what we're going to do next then is actually install this. So if I double left click on the executable and Windows protected your PC, that's normal. So we're going to go to more info and run it anyway. And we're just going to let this prepare to install like it's doing right now. And we're going to press next on this. And the next part of this is going to ask you where you want this software to actually install to so by default this is going to go into your program files times 86 folder in your c drive it's going to create a new folder inside of that folder as you can see if you want to put this somewhere else or install it somewhere else just right click on your desktop new folder and you can call this whatever you like let's just type in arm and i'm going to go to change and i'm going to drop looking down and i'm going to just navigate to my desktop I'm going to need to go to users name of my computer folder is Jamie and if I just look for desktop just here and just here we'll find that arm folder I've just created if I left click on that once so it's blue I'm going to go to ok next and install okay as you can see it's generated several shortcuts on my desktop so we're just going to press finish for now now, we don't necessarily need all of these. we got 32-bit version of ARM just here and another 32-bit. I'm going to just take these away, including the wiki just here. And I'm also going to delete the zip folder I've just downloaded as well as the setup. So if we just delete these for now. Now, like I say, this is compatible with many different front ends, which you're going to see in a minute. But for this setup guide, I'm going to be using Retrobat. If I just go into my Retrobat directory, right click, open file location, I'm going to go down to ROMs. Now in my ROMs folder, I've got some NES games and some Mega Drive games. Right now, they've got no artwork, they've got nothing, I've just got the games in there, as well as the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis if you're in a different part of the world to me. So if we just look for Mega Drive, and again here's my Mega Drive games, no artwork whatsoever. What I'm going to do is open up ARM, double left click on that shortcut. And you get a nice Back to the Future jingle just there. Okay, so first thing we need to do is not get overwhelmed by this program. There's a lot of information on there and trust me, it really isn't that awkward to figure out once you get started on this. First thing I'm going to do is first of all just go to settings now let me remind you that if this is your first time using arm before you actually see the graphical user interface the window i can see just here it will likely ask you to select a language and to select which folders you want to install or download your images to so you can bypass that and you can actually just come straight into this application where i am just now so what I'm going to do is just go to ROMs overlay directory and I need to point this to my Retrobat ROMs folder. So if you're not too good at doing this, it's very simple to do. What we're going to do is just left click on the three dots and we're going to find where say Retrobat for example is. So from here, we're just going to go down to find where Retrobat is. Here's Retrobat 
and we need to point the system folder to the RetroBat ROMs folder, which is just here. And if I then press OK, and we can also put in place bezels folder or decorations. And again, just like RetroBat ROMs, what we're looking to do is left click on those three dots. And again, we're just going to go down until we find the RetroBat folder. And I recommend putting bezels into your decorations folder if you're using RetroBat for this. If I go to press OK, now these are now in place. The next thing we need to do after we put those folders into place is if we just look down a little bit further where my cursor is pointing, we can select front end. So like I was saying, ARM is compatible with several different front ends. Recalbox, Batacera, Retrobat, Retropie, and Batacera Plus. So for this, what I'm going to do is uncheck Batacera because I'm obviously just going to be using this for Retrobat. And for whatever reason this is, when I left click on Retrobat, it's also choosing Batacera too. So that's going to be fine. Next thing we do need to do is log into Screen Scraper for this to work. So what we need to do next then is actually log in and get a free account over on Screen Scraper. And this is the Screen Scraper website. So for anyone who uses front ends, Batacera, Retrobat, you're likely familiar with the name Screen Scraper. Just sign up here, it's absolutely free. Just register. Once you've got your username and your password, we need to go to Login Screen Scraper, which you can see just here in green. It's under settings. If we just go to Login Screen Scraper, then obviously just put your credentials in here, which you've just signed up with Screen Scraper with, and then simply left click on validation. Next thing we need to do is just go up to where the ARM logo is just here and just check Screen Scraper to make sure everything's online. If I left click on this one, it's going to come up with a window and as we can see CPU server 1, CPU server 2, everything's working fine, nothing's down, Screen Scraper is up and running. So we're going to press OK on this. So next thing we need to do then is actually tell this program which systems it is we want to scrape artwork for. Next thing we're going to do under the database tab, if I just scroll down a tad, we're going to find a row of different systems just here. So what I'm going to do is just check Mega Drive, which I've already done. Now, if I go up to display, just press left on this and you're going to find please wait. Now, this is now listing my Mega Drive games. And what we're going to do is just go to select all. If I left click on select all just here, as you can see, everything is now highlighted. We can actually start scraping from here, or we can actually go to select none, and if you want to scrape artwork for an individual game, or even say two games, here we go. So just remember, control plus left click on each one of your desired games. Uh, what I'm actually gonna do is just go to select all. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is just go up to the show mix tab just here. If I left click on this one, and what we've got just here is different displays. So as we can see, we got different artwork styles just here. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to specifically look for Mega Drive. And we've actually got Sega Genesis cartridge. So obviously the same thing. Mega Drive in some parts of the world, other parts of the world is Genesis. If I left click on this one. What I'm going to do is go to set as template for Mega Drive. If I left click here, and I'm also going to go up to this top one just here and set as default template. We've also got the option here to actually download new mixed templates. If I left click on this one, we got a list here of different styles templates. So if you want to download everything, just go to all and download and install checked templates. Just left click on this one. And I'm going to just come out of here just by left clicking on the close. So what we're going to do next then, in addition to all of these new pieces of styles of artwork that is, we've already selected the template that we want, but I've just shown you how to download new templates. So once we've selected templates that we do want for Mega Drive, we're going to go to exit. And next up, we can actually choose where to scrape artwork from. So we've even got Launchbox just here. Uh, what I'm actually going to do, just for simplicity, as we've already logged in using Screen Scraper, we're going to left click on Screen Scraper just here. 
And as you can see just here at the bottom, it's now downloading different pieces of artwork, which can take a little bit of time. Now, while this is actually downloading the artwork, what I'm going to do is just open up Retrobat. Now here is Retrobat, if I go into my Mega Drive folder, we can see my games here, but we got no artwork. If I just close out of here, and we can actually find the images which are now being downloaded inside of the Retrobat directory. So open file location, and if you're using something similar to Retrobat, this process is pretty much going to be the same. So ROMs, and I'm going to go down to Mega Drive again. And as we can see in Mega Drive, we have now got downloaded images appear as well as manuals. So we're just going to let this part take its time. And like it says just here, right now it says 8 out of 17. Okie doke, saying a little bit more of Back to the Future Part 3, I believe, uh, the Wild West film. Uh, so next up, what we need to do in order for Retrobat to display the images, we're going to find create game list.xml with all ROMs. If we don't left click on this one, your images aren't going to display. So left click on create game list.xml with all ROMs. And this is going to take us, or this should take you, directly into the folder for which you just create games for. So I've done this before, just for testing purposes, before I did this video. I'm going to just delete the gamelist.xml, which I've already done. And I'm going to save this now. So your first time around of doing this, you won't find the gamelist.xml in there. So we're going to save this one I've just created. And yes... Okay then, so if we open up Retrobat again, and we go into Mega Drive, and here's our artwork that we just scraped using ARM. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually scrape artwork for Nintendo NES, just to give you all an idea how to do this again. Like I say, it can be a little bit daunting, it looks pretty intimidating how this program is laid out, but it works really well once you get the hang of it. So this time then, I'm going to just check NES. And under settings at the top, I need to make sure that my Retrobat ROMs folder is selected as well as my Retrobat Decorations folder. I also need to make sure Retrobat under front end is checked because that's what I'm going to be scraping for. And just remember, you always need to be logged in to Screen Scraper if that's what you're going to be scraping with. Now, if I just go up to the little tab just here, it's a little picture of a sun in some hills, it says direct access to the images options tab. If I left click on this one, from here I can actually be selective over the top of artwork what I've downloaded. For you, if this is your first time, all of these just here will likely be unchecked. So it's just a case of checking each one that you want to download, such as preview videos, that type of thing. For me, I've already done this. So what we're going to do next for the Nintendo NES games is go to database again and I've got NES checked. I'm going to go to display which is going to bring up my list of Nintendo NES games as you can see. I'm going to go select all because I want to download the artwork for all of these. And remember if you want to download your artwork from a different source such as Launchbox or Moby Games or GOG you can try those. I'm going to just do the easy option here for simplicity. Left click on Screen Scraper. And again, as we can see at the bottom just here in this little log, it's showing us what is actually scraping right now. Okay, and remember once again, what we need to do in order for this to display in the front end of your choice you're going to be using this for, it's just going to create gamelist.xml with all ROMs. Left click. And obviously I need to now save this new gamelist.xml file into my ROMs NES folder. So obviously I need to replace this one again, so yes. Now again what I'm going to do is open up Retrobat. And if I go to my NES folder, here we go.
And that's it for today's arm guide and how to use this for scraping your own artwork for different platforms. So obviously arm is a little bit more complex for that and there's many more options but really that's the basics of scraping artwork should you need it for anything and just remember to create new game list.xmls otherwise your new artwork isn't going to display correctly so anyways if you like today's video hit notifications subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content and if you're new to my channel and you use batacera retro pi or you own a raspberry pi retro bat user do check out my playlist i've covered a lot of those in the past as setup guides anyways join me on social media i'm on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok but until next time, stay retro.